Hello everybody, that is here. Today I have a new motherboard review for you. That will be Gigabyte X99 Ultra Gaming Motherboard. I saw this motherboard in one of the YouTubers' coverage from Computex, so it's a relatively fresh model that was just released along with other three X99 motherboards on Computex. And uh, I emailed Gigabyte to asking them if it will be nice enough to show me this model in person and so I can play with it a little bit and I got examples, so thank you very much for providing that. This time I decided to make a review slightly different. Usually, you know, you put a product on a tabletop, you're telling the features and things like this. I decided to actually install it and have a, some personal experience with the motherboard before I actually will be talking about it. So you can see it's fully installed in my test bench. I replaced my uh, previous Gigabyte motherboard, which was 11. 51 model with this one and also I had a couple hiccups It's fully working right now and I would like to cover a few highlights for you Well, first of all, this is not top of the line x99 motherboard in the new lineup They have one more model which is a little bit more advanced and more workstation type of the motherboard This one is truly gaming oriented so you don't have any extra features that more likely you wouldn't be using they put big emphasis on uh, lighting options here. You can see there's a lot of stuff going up. It's a lot of lights. So you might not see it as clearly as it shows in a darker environment. But believe me, this is a lot of stuff going on with this one. So what they did with the motherboard to start with. Obviously, if it's an X99 motherboard, you have a 2011 version 3 socket. You have a 8 bank of memory. And um, in terms of PCI slots, which is probably the next question that pe most people will be interested in, you have two 16s, two 8s, and one single speed PCIe slot. That gives you opportunity to run SLI at full speed as long as you don't using anything else. As soon as you start using one of the 8 speed slots in addition to two 16s, Everything scaled down to 8. But as you know, the impact on FPS is relatively minimal. So you're just losing, I don't know, like 5% or so. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing that uh, Gigabyte did differently from whatever I saw before, at least from them, that they reinforced almost every single slot on this motherboard. All 8 sockets on the memory is reinforced with metal. And also, you have reinforced all PCIe slot. They're saying that it allows them to improve strength of the motherboard in a vertical position. If vertical, vertical, if motherboard is looking vertical, so like going down on up, almost two times, and a pulling card out, it's almost three times. I think it's pretty good improvement in the term that more and more people start making water cooling builds and they bringing them to uh, LAN parties or a lot of people asking to build computer for them for, from somebody else and asking that to ship. So obviously if you're going to ship or move computer on a regular basis, it's definitely advisable to have a motherboard that has reinforced PCIe Memory is not so unless you water cool it, but PCIe slots for sure because as soon as you're adding water blocks that increase weight of the card like three times. So if you get dropped in a shipment and things like this, it can be a problem. So that's really important change. I think it's uh, definitely something that other competition would take a note because as we know, there is uh, some other models on the market that has, uh, for example, one or two PCI slots reinforced, but not all of them. This one has covered you completely. In terms of the storage, you have pretty much standard setup. You have a bunch of SATA 3 slots that goes your rate from 0 to 10. You have one single socket for NVMI type of connection. So you have a 750 Intel SSD. You can connect it to the motherboard. And uh, you have one SATA Express port. Also on the motherboard, you will see two M.2 ports, but doesn't mean that you can use both for SATA drives. One actually dedicated for or recommended to use for Wi-Fi card because there's no Wi-Fi connectivity. Also on the back, you see the provisioning for antennas, but actually there's no built Wi-Fi on this unit. So one 
M.2 slot is for Wi-Fi card. Second slot is for SSD. The good thing that I noticed that they don't limit you on the size of M.2 SSD drive, so you can have anything from the smallest one to the biggest one, which is 110 millimeters. So if you want to go whole shebang with the biggest possible physically um, uh, possible drive, no problem. You can put it in, absolutely no issues here. Another important thing that I would like to notice is that there's a couple accessories that the new type of accessories that I noticed, one of them, Maybe I am is speaking my OCD thing, but nevertheless, on the, on the back back IO shield on the back of the motherboard that you put um, on the back of your case, they actually use very nice dark metal, like gun metal type of finish with a very fine print on it. So it will go really well with black cases or white cases or whatever cases. So it's really nice. I like it much more than the usual sticker plastic ones before with uh, sometimes with weird colors on it. So that's what thing I really like. Second option that I noticed that for the SATA drive, maybe you wouldn't even use this, but nevertheless, I'll just show you here because I have it open. So for the SATA, sorry, not drive, for the SATA cables, they actually have those metallic reflecting cables that will be nicely reflect color from your RGB options that you're going to enable. Because you're not going to use lights on this motherboard, then no problem, no point to take it because this is a kind of main feature here. In addition, all other good goodies. Um, Another thing, speaking about lights, let's shift gears a little bit here. You have five zones that cover it with the lights for this motherboard. One is all your memory slots are highlighted. It appears to be when you look on a motherboard that they look like they have like entire huge LED going along the memory modules, but in fact, actual LED is just on both ends. So when you have a not very dark environment, you probably will see more lights coming just on the ends of this memory socket. But when it's dark or you have a more memory modules populated in the slots, which is create kind of dark environment between modules, then entire line get highlighted. It looks really nice. The second zone is a um, under PCIe slots. There's a three little LEDs that under each 16 and eight slot. I can't really show you because I can't turn it, but I will make a separate shot to, to indicate how it works. So those three lights highlight your GPUs from, or whatever else you installed in other slots. This zone number two. The other zone is uh, on your armor you have this white armor first i thought like mm, white why white mm, i'm not sure if it's a good choice but actually when you install it it's, it's a good idea to use white because when you use all the slides the white probably is the best thing to have because it will confirm exactly the same colors that your lighting selection so that's actually a smart thing to do so in an armor you have one light in the upper part, above all these uh, connections for I.O. on the back. The second is above your audio chipset and all this, all this business. So that's, that's there. One thing I would like to mention that unlike, for example, memory chips or your PCIe slot LED chips that actually connected, not connected, it's, it's part of the motherboard, it's, well, uh, it's uh, soldered to the motherboard. Lights in, in the armor inside, it's actually a little strip that is attached to the armor and you have a little cable goes to the motherboard. So if you will remove the armor for whatever reason you don't like it or you want, want to paint it, whatever. So you basically, if you put it back, you can have lights back. But if you take it completely, so you take lights with you, right? I'm not sure, maybe it could be possible to reuse um, those wires and connector and have a strip attached to it, but I'm not sure what the uh, wattage of that little connector motherboard that goes to the light because light itself like literally two inches long right so it's, it's minuscule power so if you want like big one who knows will it work or not but more likely at least 30 centimeters will be work but it's my guess I don't have a proof for it and uh, finally the, uh, there's two more zone and the last zone is above um, chipset so it will be under the motherboard, uh, sorry, under the cards in most cases. So I have a two, two cards, so one card kind of above that light, but second goes straight across it. So keep that in mind. I would say that the motherboard looks a little bit more tacky when you have it in your hands. 
but when you install, everything looks start looking pretty nicely. Another light feature that worth mentioning is on many other motherboards recently released, you have this connector that allows you to connect additional strip on the motherboard and like here. So it's not, this light is not part of the motherboard. It's just additional light here that you connect and it goes exactly the same color cycle that you want. So you won't select one solid color, like for example, in my case, because I have a, a, a case with red accent and you have a red accent on the motherboard and everything cables, I have red too. So obviously for me, the red will look the best, at least in my opinion. But if you want something else, you can have something else. So this light will repeat the same pattern that you have on your motherboard itself, so you have a uniformed look. All right, guys, so that's basically, in a nutshell, the motherboard from a Gigabyte. So if you're shopping for a gaming board, it's pretty, pretty kind of motherboard. It's also because of the platform it's based on. You don't have that many limitations on um, number of PCIe lanes, assuming you don't use the cheapest, smallest CPU using there. One thing that I encountered, uh, one problem that I personally encountered is this, this board. Actually, I purchased new E5 Xeon, 10 core Xeon that I wanted to use on this motherboard and I wanted to put it in this test bench for some tests that I hope to run. Unfortunately, because I have engineering example and the stepping, used an engineering example is not compatible with this motherboard. I had to drain my personal rig, remove 5930 and put it here, which worked like no issues whatsoever. My rig accepted engineering example, thanks God. But uh, this is one thing to keep in mind that if you use one of those, uh, it's kind of going on in the internet right now that it's cool to buy Xeon uh, engineering example and use it. So keep in mind, maybe it will be fixed in future bias releases. Right now, those um, unofficial engineering example stuff that gets sold on eBay and things like this, it will not work with this motherboard board, at least at present time. Other than that, all standard stuff is fully supported, no issues whatsoever. Again, thank you Gigabyte to give me this uh, example. I definitely put it in good use for future water cooling type of um, testing that I'm going to use. So basically, thanks to them, I have a um, test bench revision five. We saw a video about revision four, but this is revision five now because we have brand new stuff there and um, going to perform a number test test with this one and it will be interesting to have a current crop of the hardware to make sure it's uh, concurrent with what peop other people having. So okay, guys, thank you again for watching my channel. I appreciate your support and uh, comments on the videos. I will come back with my other stuff on a shortly basis. I have very interesting projects for my customers. So it's a lot of progress there. Need to make videos. Just take a little bit time. Thank you again and see you soon.